Hello and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. The EDB has decided to go ahead with the launch of the Orion 1 Space Liner to Hoffman Station despite the fact that the access arm that was supposed to be delivered on ETS-7 had a faulty piece so that the arm is in a shorter than expected state. The agency has also decided to go ahead even though there is currently no way to fully refuel the space liner at the station, though there is enough fuel at the station to supply the Orion 1 for its retro burn and return to the KSC. This is still considered a test mission, which is why its purpose is solely to carry five new crew members to Hoffman Station and not the tourists which will be the primary passengers for the Orion 1 later on. The commander for this mission is Haytrude Kerman, and the backup pilot is Valentina Kerman, as we're getting the signal that they're ready to go here. And there are the rapiers lit, and the ramjets lit. The only engines not lit, of course, are the LVN nerve nuclear engines, which will be used once the space liner gains altitude, and can use those engines at the best possible efficiency. So here it goes. The crew has uh, mixed emotions, it looks like. Hey, true, not so sure, Valentina thrilled. And rotation. And they're off. We have takeoff. Gear is up. And the uh, Orion 1 is rotating to a pitch of 30 degrees here. Looks like the angle of attack is nominal, lift is nominal. Of course, with the short wing, the Orion 1 doesn't have much room for error when it comes to lift. Uh, things seem to be going quite well here. Now, an altitude of 2,700 meters. The craft is flattening out a bit in order to gain some more velocity. It is heavy and doesn't have too much power behind it. Six kilometers now. It'll really begin to pick up speed between 12 and 15 kilometers, as that is where the air breathing engines will get their maximum thrust. Coming up on 9 kilometers now. There's 9 kilometers. Still not picking up speed too quickly here. It's going to be a long trip to orbit for this plane. Here we are, past 12.5 kilometers, and now after breaking the sound barrier and getting well past Mach 1.3. We are seeing some better acceleration from the engines. You can see their uh, thrust increasing dramatically on the ramjet engines. Here the Orion 1 is in its Phoenix phase as the ramjets peak out on thrust and it is accelerating past 1000 meters per second soon here. 15 kilometers in altitude. And there we have 1,000 meters per second. This is what the craft looks like from a ground perspective. Uh, certainly quite a sight. One of its better angles, of course. Uh, with the unfortunate placements of the air intakes, sometimes not the best looking craft. Here the ramjet engines are tapering off at beyond 20 kilometers altitude. Velocity is good, past 1,200 meters per second now. Rapiers are still going quite nicely. Still in air breathing mode there. You'll note that the LVNs were ignited pretty soon after they reached an altitude where they would get uh, the prescribed 800 seconds of ISP. And so they've been, they've been on all along. And that's beneficial because they are burning some of the fuel and making the craft lighter. It's better that they burn the fuel early on and make the craft lighter now because by the time the and here we have the ramjets off and by the time the rapiers finish their fuel and here the rapiers are now in closed cycle mode once they finish their oxidizer the LVNs are all on their own and so with their meager acceleration there is a risk of not uh, making a full orbit before returning into the atmosphere if the craft isn't light enough. Here you see the Iran 1 pitching up dramatically. This is a severe angle of attack here, and that is in order to gain as much time before apoapsis, before the oxidizer runs out. And that's the end of the oxidizer, so now it's just the LVN engines, no more rapiers, 
no more ramjets obviously and you can see that uh, rapiers did put the craft to a decent apoapsis uh, with two minutes to spare so now it's up to the LVNs to finish off the orbit the craft will go beyond the apoapsis uh, they do need quite a lot of time in order to make this burn the numbers look good though as the Orion 1 has an apoapsis of 85 kilometers you can see that the crew is completely placid completely satisfied with the situation and looking inside we uh, get a view from the passengers who are of course EDB crew members here and so uh, this is how the cabin looks from inside the Orion 1 space plane very cozy sky full of stars the Orion 1 is now past apoapsis and uh, heading back down still got about 300 meters per second left to burn uh, quite tight on the liquid fuel as you can see it will need every bit it can get now heading to 80 kilometers but getting to decent orbital speeds here and finally here we have the Orion 1 making orbit obviously it is not going to be a perfectly circular orbit at this stage but as long as one side is low and the other side is close to touching the station's orbit it will be good for rendezvous and that's what we see it doing here the periapsis about uh, 72 kilometers and the apoapsis 118 in order to reach the station uh, it did have to make a minor inclination correction in order to match the station and so that's what you see it turning for here very slow turning craft and there was a need to save the mod propellant in order to uh, help with the rendezvous with the station and docking of course uh, every bit of mod propellant counts in order to get this thing uh, docked to the station and so just the reaction wheels to turn the craft as much as possible here we have the inclination burn you'll note that the Orion 1 does not have redundant systems it doesn't have Werner thrusters uh, as a backup for the mop propellant RCS system. It only has the mop propellant RCS system unlike the shuttle. So here we have the rendezvous approach and with such a large craft approaching Hoffman Station of course it had a large standoff distance of about two kilometers here and here you see it's starting to slow down on approach to the station making sure it uh, kills most of its velocity well away from the station. It is actually at this point attempting to use the engine gimbling on the LVNs in order to turn itself towards the uh, negative relative velocity marker but it's unable to do so and Heytrude has to turn on the RCS system and so some RCS burn at this stage getting closer to Hoffman Station 1.4 kilometers and closing. Velocity killed and at one kilometer now the Orion 1 turns towards the station and begins to very carefully make its way towards it. The docking process was quite a long ordeal and so the station's uh, camera drones got quite a good view of a lot of phases of it and here we see the Orion 1 making one of many many turns in order to line up properly on approach. Very complicated of course because it has to get the optimal port placement and uh, at this stage it is no longer using the LVNs very much so has to make sure that the RCS ports are doing the best they can and sometimes that requires a particular orientation on approach. Much of the docking process is merely drifting while getting one of the axes aligned and then stopping that drift and then getting another axis in line and here you see the Orion 1 looking close but a little bit off to the left there well with respect to the viewer of course you can see the arm on the station there and of course the Orion 1 may have to rotate in order to get the right position with respect to that arm here closing in on the station from this view here only 100 meters away you'll note that mop propellant has been 
very much spent, quite a lot of it spent on this approach. And so not much to spare at all. Now, in the case where the Orion 1 may lack the the fuel, the mop propellant, in order to dock with the station, it is possible for the docking area, the docking assembly of the station to actually move out to meet the Orion 1 and pull it in as a tug. And so that entire docking arm assembly and the, and the crew module that is currently at the hub there uh, could be decoupled from the station and meet the Orion 1 and pull it to dock. Uh, that would not be the ideal situation though. We do, our, we do expect our pilots to be able to dock properly and using the, the supplied amount of mod propellant. Here getting much closer to the station, still more than 60 meters out though. You can see how difficult it is to line up properly, especially taking into account the positioning of those arms and we are about to find out whether those arms are properly positioned for the Orion 1 making sure that they meet that hatch currently only one hatch will be reachable from the arms but uh, there is the intention to make sure that both of the upper hatches of the Orion 1 are accessible approaching the station low like this is intentional it is to avoid the possibility of the wings knocking the arms and so the Orion 1 will approach low and then slowly uh, move itself up using its RCS system. And so that's what you see here. Very carefully nudging its way between what would be two full arms later on. This was quite an intense process for Heytrude Kerman, but it looked like she was handling it quite well. Uh, very cool-headed during this whole process, well-trained of course, and here the Orion 1 is um, less than 5 meters away from the docking port. And you can see the RCS ports trying to move it up here, also trying to keep it stable. RCS port placement is not ideal on the Orion 1 currently. More work will certainly be done on that for subsequent versions, as we see here, very close to dock. Very close indeed, waiting for some magnetism, and hopefully not magnetism that will move the space liner too much. Just getting it very much in line and into a straight docking position here. And we seem to have some contact. And yes, the Orion 1 space plane has docked. Amazing. This has to be quite a sight for the EDB. Quite, quite a remarkable sight altogether. And uh, the culmination of a lot of work in terms of planning. But we see here uh, a disturbing fact. And that's that the ladder from the arm does not quite line up with the hatch. Is just a little bit off there that's going to be a unfortunate source of embarrassment after what would otherwise be a remarkable triumph of, uh, of piloting on the in the case of hatred Kerman and of course general engineering from the station planners and the Orion 1 space liner designers here we see the station and the space liner slowly turning so that the stations solar panels are correctly positioned with respect to the Sun and finally we have the transfer of the crew members the new crew for the space station uh, Mergas, Durfel, Neil Brett, Bill and Bob will be joining Jebediah Kerman for a total station complement of six Kerbals currently and uh, now we would expect that the station would begin further operations Thank you for watching this presentation of the flight of the Orion 1 to Hoffman Station and its successful docking. We hope you enjoyed this mission. If you did enjoy this mission, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.